If you're a Texas landowner and you're interested in improving the quality of the genetics on your ranch, you can contact me at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hey everybody, welcome to the show and to Cross Plains, Texas and also to the one of the most beautiful manicured pieces of property I've been to in a long, long time. This is Mossy Rock Whitetails, and on today's program, we'll introduce you to some folks that have used the whitetail deer to help transform this piece of property into a show place. And they're also using whitetail deer to help others do the same thing. I'm Michael Deveni with Mossy Rock Whitetails. I'm the ranch manager here. We've got 220 adult deer, about 110 bucks, 110 does, and about 130 fawns on the ground. I'm Kurt Mai, the owner of uh, Mossy Rock Whitetails and Mossy Rock Ranch in Cross Plains, Texas. We would love for you to come out and see our deer. We'd welcome to show you any pedigrees. Everything we have is pedigreed. We send in the DNA. It's all proof. We, we have it all recorded, and we'd love for you to come out and see our deer. Anybody interested in coming out and looking at our deer, we'd love to have you out. Uh, the months of July and August are the best times to come. Um, you can come anytime, give us a call. We're here every day. Uh, number's 254-725-4334. So everybody's got a favorite look of the deer that they like. And for me, uh, my look is, uh, my favorite look is big, clean, pretty typical deer. I want them symmetrical, and I want them big. And it just so happens that that is the same goal that they're trying to do here at Mossy Rock. All right, well I can tell who that is right there. Oh my goodness. Tell me, that is Express Shadow, right? Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. Look at him. As big as he's ever been. At six years old, I mean, that, that is amazing. I mean, what do you think that deer will score? I mean, it'd be well over 350, I, I yeah, believe. He's, he's beautiful too. I mean, he uh, he's just got a good symmetrical shape, but he's non-typical, so he's yes. he's beautiful. Well, Why? who was that guy with him? I mean, uh, That's a big franchise three-year-old. Oh, really? Yes, sir. And so that's out of franchise. Well, I know franchise is getting it done. I mean, in the, in the deer industry, I mean, every sale I go to, I'm looking and I'm hearing franchise, franchise, franchise. It all comes back to Mossy Rock. Absolutely. Okay, and so a three-year-old, so he is getting it done. He's throwing nice. Yeah, we've, nice. Got, we've got big yearlings. We've got big two-year-olds. But last year, -year we filmed franchise when we were out here. Yes, sir. Okay, and so you're going to be able to show him to us? Yes, sir. Okay, I want to be able to see. So, folks, we'll show you franchise, and that is that buck's daddy. But are you going to use him, like, for a cover buck or something? Uh, we actually sold him already, so Did you really? he's going to breed at another place. You know, what's, what's amazing, folks, is that uh, the deer business is, is we, we went through a couple of tough years, I think, uh, I mean, lately all over the place. Yeah, but in Texas right now, deer business is back. No, I mean, no it's question. coming back, and it's robust. And literally at Mossy Rock, you basically sold everything that you've got to sell. We have. We've sold all our bucks this year. We've sold just about all the does we need to sell. So. And, and so deer business is good, and it is exceptional here at Mossy Rock, and the reason why is, I mean, look at the genetics. You know, the, the cool thing about coming here is that when we talk about genetics, I, I really want to stress that it's all about genetics. Yeah, you got to feed them right, but it's all about genetics. I mean, no so y'all y'all have taken the pedigrees and you really focused on the does, didn't you? Yeah, we, we focused on proven production does. And what's happened- great marketability and there, there are two different kinds of customers that y'all have, okay, the way I look at it. You've got guys that are in the breeding business that literally, they're, they're, all they're trying to do is grow the biggest deer on earth and they're, they're using your genetics to try to get there. Yes. Okay, and then you've got other guys that want to uh, take your enhanced genetics and put them on for their, their 
Well, they can use them for breeding, right? But many people are actually using them to stock ranches as well. Yeah, they're they're using them for breeding purposes on their ranch to improve right. their genetics. Absolutely. And so what's happened is like, for example, this piece of property, what this three thousand acres, more or less? Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay, three thousand acres, and and before this deer farm was here, this piece of property, I think if you killed a hundred and twenty-five inch deer, It'd be you, doing it good. was a two tanker. You drive, burn two tanks up, showing everybody <laughs> in town. Now, I mean, it's like thanks to deer farming and what's going on here genetically, I mean, the hunting in this area is over the top. Yes. And so what they're doing is they're actually taking these genetics and they're selling them to people that are tired of trying to, well, they're tired of seeing 120 inch deer at the most, and they're, uh, they want to grow big deer. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, it costs just as much money to feed an inferior deer as it does to feed a superior deer. That's so correct. why in the world would you want to have inferior deer? And it's for that reason that when we talk and we give advice on, on deer farming that we suggest people, if you're going to get in deer farming, start with the best genetics you can afford. That's right. That's right. And so if somebody wants more information on buying deer, if you don't have any for sale, it's like, well, what do they need to do? I mean, because I mean. We'll have more next year. They're making babies every year. Yeah. Okay. So this show, I mean, if you're watching online, if you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and post them down below. And uh, I promise you, I'll get right back with you. If you're watching on TV, I want to let you know that you can watch our show online and uh, by going to my website. And uh, if you're watching on TV, you're watching this show during the 2018 calendar year. Okay, the does when you're watching the show are gonna be bred. You can come out here, you can take a look. Yes, sir. And you'll certainly make a deal with those people then. Absolutely, we'll have more. Okay, so give them a telephone number in the event that they wanna contact you. 254-725-4334. Okay, we've shown you a franchise son. We're gonna show you a lot more from Mossy Rock Whitetails, but right now, let's go take a look at franchise. Let's do it. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. Franchise is just has been an amazing buck from day one. Um, he was 222 as a yearling, uh, 355 at two. What's so great about him? His his body holds. You know he can hold that big horn. He's healthy. You know he's not. You know so big where he, he has a tough time holding his antlers. He's just he's just a total stud, and we're really proud of it. And, and we're going to keep breeding with him because he he you know he he throws. You put him on on good doe lines, he's throwing like crazy. So we're gonna stay with him, but we literally have a whole pen of franchise yearlings that you're gonna see that are awesome. All right, folks, last year, we were right here in the same pen and we showed you a buck by the name of Franchise, and he is getting it done in the Texas deer industry and across the country now. I mean, people are starting to realize when they breed with Franchise, they're getting some good offspring. Look at him this year, what a buck. Yes, sir. Wow. And this year he's how old? He's five. He, uh, not quite as big as last year, but you know, we bred him pretty hard, so. Uh, well, you've got some yearlings out of him too, don't you? Yes, sir. All the yearlings in this pen are out of Franchise or Tombstone. Wow. Okay, and Tombstone is a, a beautiful buck that last year we filmed and he was just absolutely giant. But looking at Franchise and then looking at his offspring in here, that's Pretty doggone impressive. Pretty good. The rest of these are all yearlings? Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Really? Yep. Okay. Even that great big one back there? Yes, sir. That's, that's a yearling. Yes, sir. What you gotta have a name for him. <laughs> yes, sir. His name's Maestro. He's Maestro. kind of our our up and comer there. <laughs> we love his look. We love his pedigree. Wow. Okay. He's so clean and pretty. Yes, sir. And that's really what y'all are going for. Yes, sir. Okay. I mean a lot of people are going for inches now. But uh, in the deer industry, but uh, but our, cu Mossy Rock, our are... customers have been asking for for cleaner deer, so, yeah, and so we're, we're listening. Yeah, you're listening. So uh, tell me about Maestro's pedigree. He's franchise on Secret Weapon on Miss Texas. Was he born here? Yes, sir. You hear that? That deer yes, was sir. born here. Yes, sir. If if uh, I mean the way to tell, I mean a really really good deer farmer, in my opinion, is when they're breeding, they're they're breeding, and the deer are born on the place. I mean that's. And that's where y'all have got y'all got it going on. I mean, the genetics here are phenomenal. You're breeding with your own stuff. That means you believe in your own stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, take a look at that, Maestro. Okay, so you got semen available on him? We hope to this fall. Absolutely. Okay, what what he means by they hope to right. is tell him. Well, he's a yearling, so he, he's he's yet to be collected. So yeah. So we, we will be collecting him this fall. So come uh, come late October, November, he's gonna hopefully get collected. And if you're interested in semen, you 
ought to give Michael a call. And if you have any questions or comments, you're watching online, just make sure and post them below. We'll get back with you. In the meantime, um, he got some other big deer out here. I mean, have you got any two-year-olds out, we have, we out have of franchise? We have a great pen of two-year-olds out of franchise. Really? Yes, okay, yes, so sir. what you can see, what y'all are seeing right here is the result of the franchise breeding, okay? And this is the one-year-olds. We just showed you a three-year-old. Now you're looking at one-year-olds, including Maestro. I want to take a look at the two-year-olds because that'll show you production-wise when you have a buck-like franchise that keeps getting it done year after year after year. That's right. We're going to show you three generations to prove it. So let's go. Uh, let's go take a look at some two-year-olds. Let's do it. If you're in Texas and interested in becoming a deer farmer, you can contact me for deer farming franchise opportunities right here in Texas at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. Deer farm is not for everybody. But for the people that it's for, they love it. They're passionate about it. And uh, it's hard to find young people today that I think that are passionate about deer farming. And so when I met Gunner here last year, I thought he's a special young man. And he is because he loves deer just as much as I do, just as much as Kurt or Michael or any deer farmer that I know. And like I said, deer farming is not for everybody. But for the people that it's for, it's something that we just can't get enough of. My favorite part of uh, working in this business would have to be that you're outside every day. Uh, there's no way I could ever work at a desk job. I mean, I realize there is some, some desk work to get, that goes into this for sure, but uh, just being outside and working with deer every day, you, you simply can't beat it. I just love deer. I grew up out in the country hunting. I, I grew, I was in the town, I lived in the town, but you know, we had land out and that was, I was always a tractor nut. I was on tractors and and I just always been around it. So this ranching has been a big part of me where I wouldn't say I'm a rancher, I'm more of a farmer. I like to get out on tractor. I, you know, I live in Dallas, you know, these guys are out here every day, morning and evening. We, I couldn't do it without them and I wouldn't do it without them. It, you know, it is a lot of work, but they do it because they love it. We have a lot of fun out here. You know, we really do and we love the business, but you know, there's a reason that we're doing it too. It is a business. And it, you know, it is to make a profit. And you know, that's why we've worked so hard to have good deer is so we have customers that come and buy them. And so we would love for you to come out and see our deer. We'd welcome to show you any pedigrees. Everything we have is pedigreed. We sent in the DNA. It's all proof. We, we have it all recorded and we'd love for you to come out and see our deer. Cause we, we you know, we, we are really proud of our, our deer and uh, also our pens just you know we keep everything up good and and you know uh, our deer are healthy you know you know we're real proud of just the, their conditions so please come out franchise is getting it done that's for dog on sure no you've got question. some unbelievable yearlings thank you are these deer right here yearlings yes sir stop stop dad gum michael these are yearlings? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're all, uh, all freeze frame and triple crown yearlings. Okay. All right. That is amazing. You know, you drive past here and uh, you, you like, this doesn't even phase you anymore. I mean, <laughs> for me, I'm sitting here, I go to deer farms all over the country and to see a pen of yearlings like this is amazing. No, they're, they're I mean, great. We're, we're real excited. I mean, of the, the future. I mean, next year's gonna be fun. Oh, and the jump between one and two is incredible. Last year, we were out here and we filmed, well, we filmed a bunch of franchise yearlings last year. That's where yes, we were sir. heading, trying, yes, to, trying to show you the two-year-old franchise deer that we last year we shot. So we can, when we get over there, when we get done showing you these, we're gonna show you what those guys look like as yearlings. And I'll bet you money, these yearlings that we've just seen so far today they're, they're are, way better. are better than yes, the yearlings that you had last year. Yes, sir. And the result of that is, well, the reason for that, I should say, is genetics. Yes. Simple as that. All right. That is, and these are out of freeze frame and triple crown. Yes, sir. About half and half in there. Next year is going to be fun. All right. Let's go look at some guys, and uh, I want to say hi to them again. I saw them last year. Yeah, let's go check them out. All right. Man. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy.
let me phone a lick. Two year olds. Yes, sir. These are franchise? Franchise two year olds. There's a couple out of black magic in here, but for the most part they're all out of out of franchise. That is hard to believe right there. Yes, franchise two year olds. Now last year we can go back and we can show you the video that we shot last year of these guys and you can see them as yearlings. Okay, take a good look at what they look like as yearlings because at two years old, take a look at them. And so the difference, if you're a whitetail hunter and you're looking at a yearling buck come walking out there and you think, well, do I want to take him or do I want to wait until he's two? Yeah, always you want to wait. wait. Okay, just take a look at that. So now that is amazing. And then, uh, I mean, there's some beasts in yeah. there. Okay, okay, so if somebody wants to, are these deer sold too? We've sold a few of them as breeders, but I mean we're going we're trying to keep our, keep them to their three for the most part. So. Okay, and the reason for that is so you can see what they're going to do. See the potential, yeah. Okay, and then at that point you'll make a decision whether you're going to sell them to somebody else to breed with, or, or you're going to keep them. Correct. Okay, that's a good strategy. Yes, okay, sir. if somebody wants more information on Mossy Rock Whitetails, give them a phone number. 254-725-4334. And uh, they are located just outside of Cross Plains, Texas, about two hours from Fort Worth. And uh, these, they have some beautiful deer. They've got some unbelievable genetics. And, and as you can see, franchise is really getting it done. But I hear that uh, you've now you've got, uh, you, you're kind of changing a little bit strategy. You're going for more of the typical look? Yeah, we, okay. we wanted to go bring in a few outside bucks with some more, more typical look, but what our customers are asking. What, what do you look at first? Do you look at the, the looks of a buck first, or do you look at the pedigree of the buck first? The look first, and then the pedigree. Yeah, because if he doesn't have the look, right. it doesn't matter no, what's behind yeah, him. That's right. Okay, so you're looking at the look first, and then the pedigree. But yes. if the look is absolutely what you're looking for, and the pedigree doesn't back it up, what do you do? You, you kind of move on. I mean, it depends on how, how, how well the look is. You well, might change your opinion of that pedigree after okay. you see the look. You move on. Most A lot of deer breeders would not move on. The reason why is because they like that look. Right. But what you're doing, you're breeding for, for genetics. I mean, Correct. you want not just the look, but you want the background. Certain too. pedigree that that fits what we're trying to do. So the pedigree is vitally important, and you can see the result of a great pedigree in, in what you're looking at right here in this pen. This is just unreal. Yes, sir. Wow. So you have a new partnership with somebody. Tell them about it. Yes, sir. So one of the bucks we chose to bring in, we just we bought a half interest in at another mm -hmm. place. He's going to stay there, and we're going to incorporate him through our AI program. Okay, and his name is Automatic. His name Right? Yes, sir. And it's automatic, man. When oh, you take a no look doubt. at this deer, I mean, he's he's unreal. Tell me about his pedigree. He's uh, Express on Max Dream on Easy Does It's sister. Well, that, so, that's stout. You can just, see how come how come he looks the way he looks. And, yes, and so that's kind of a cool thing about the deer industry. I mean, the, the people that you're partnering with, they're friends of ours. Yes, sir. Okay? And, yes, sir. and they're competitors. No, oh, absolutely. Okay, And so it's okay to, to have a partnership with a competitor. Yeah. And, and, and I'm thinking, you know, the deer industry, that's one of the cool things about it. Uh, it's like a big family. Yeah, we're competitive, highly competitive. And we all want to have the biggest and the best deer. But you know what? We're all willing to help each other out. Too. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they're, they're good friends of ours. And we, we're very excited about the, the partnership. And so what you've got, you've got these new genetics that you're bringing into an already unbelievable genetic line to produce the future for Mossy Rock White Tails. That's right, that's the plan. So everybody's got a favorite look of the deer that they like. And for me, uh, my look is, uh, my favorite look is big, clean, pretty, typical deer. I want them symmetrical and I want them big. And it just so happens that that is the same goal that they're trying to do here at Mossy Rock. And so when you take a look at these bucks, especially you add in automatic and you add in majestic, I mean, they have got a lineup for the future that is gonna be incredible. So I'm looking forward to coming back next year and seeing what they've got on the ground because the yearlings this year, the yearlings blow last year's yearlings away. And that says that they're doing something right. Every year, your deer need to be getting better because you're stacking better genetics every single year. And so as I look at the yearlings this year, I go, man, what a wonderful crop of yearlings, and I just can't wait to see what they have next year.